Hey guys, what's up? This is Val Cameron from Dreamlight. I'm gonna do a quick video with my new stylish portrait studio. Now, as of the time of this recording, this item is not yet out in my store, and once it's you know available, I will include a link below this video. So, first of all, this is for you know all kinds of stylish, cool-looking portraits, right? It's not meant for full figure renders or anything like that. It's just a small cool scenery specifically designed for portrait photography. And portrait means kind of mid abdomen up, right? And in most cases you will have a fuzzy or blurry backdrop. So what this includes is 30 presets. All right, so we've got the scene, Obviously the girl and the chair are not included, right? But you've got the set and the iRib preset, and then you've got 30 presets. Now, it's very simple to change the preset. All you do is go to your scene, expand the Stylish Portrait Studio um, uh, folder here, right? And click on the cylinder room. Okay, then go back here. And now you can change, wow, well, let's say you wanna have this one, right? Just double click on that, and it's there, all right? You want something else, like click on that, and it's there. And this changes, you know, everything. It changes how lighting behaves, all the colors, all the patterns. And this set includes dual, um, the background is dual, right? it has dual layers. So some of them are semi-transparent and feature specific effects. Some of them are behind the other one and have different kind of scale and color scale and all that, right? So it's really cool looking, really odd and surreal at times, right? The opening one is this one, Zebra. And you can go, you know, you can also tweak them, you know, individually, manually. I'm gonna show you that in a second. So pretty much just double click to instantly change, right? Now what happens when it's loaded is that you also have a light center it's, in, it's kind of like an item right in the center of the scene. Uh, if you rotate this one, it says rotate to orbit eye catcher light. Within this here, you've got something called the eye catcher light. And from the top view, you can see the camera, you can see your character, and you can see the light, all right? And if you rotate this one here, see what happens is that the light, if you look over here, the light orbits around your character. It always targets your character that orbits around. So you can have the light from the right side if your character is looking to the right, or from the left side if your character is looking from the left. And as a rule of thumb, you always want to kind of catch your character's face with the light. That creates nice tension in your image, gives more lighting here on the side, and a little bit of darkness towards the camera, right? So if I just quickly look through the perspective view, you can see that there is no real floor here, right? The character kind of floats in midair. And I did this on purpose because I wanted you to kind of be able to uh, have a high camera facing down or low camera facing up without losing touch of the background. So the, the bottom is kind of here just to reflect things like lighting and just provide some extra lighting as well, right? Then you've got this light here at the top that changes um, depending on what kind of preset you are using. So the camera can obviously zoom out, zoom in and whatnot, right, to uh, reposition it if you need to, to um, fit your own scene and characters and all that. Cool. All right, so next, that eye catcher light also catches the, the eyes of your character and creates that sparkle, that kind of, you can see that vaguely right here, right? Kind of like a small hot spot right in the middle of the eyes. That just puts a small, kind of like a wow factor on your character, right? Another thing you have is here, it's called eye target, right? Point left and right eyes at this and then move to shift eye focus. So uh, pretty much what you can do is Grab this item. Let me zoom out here on the secondary view here. It's a little bit outside. It's right here. All right And if you move this now You change where your character is looking All right, and you got to make sure that both eyes are aiming at this If not you need to set left eye Point at And then choose here 
eye target, all right? And then you've got right eye, point at eye target. There you go. Now she's looking at that point over here. And you normally when you're looking at something, you want to have that single point, right? You seldom look somewhere else with one of your eyes. You're always looking at one single point. All right. And then you can grab that item again here. Eye target. All right. And you can use, for instance, translate and just move it anywhere you like to shift where your character is looking. All right. You can also shift that obviously up and down, right? Go to left view, for instance, zoom out a little bit. And you've got that over here. You can change it up if you want the character to look up a little bit more. Or down. You can even low, place it below ground. doesn't really matter as long as your character is looking at that point. All right. Nice. So that's that feature. And now I'm going to just quickly cover because you have plenty of options to alter these backgrounds on your own, right? You have, like I showed you, 30 presets, so it's kind of like a lot. I mean, you could just click on this one here, right? You can also wide rotate the room. If you click on the room and wide rotate it, you will just alter everything, right? The entire room and how the background behaves around your character. This goes without saying, right? But the thing is, you also have manual control. Let me load one that has dual layers. For instance, this one, Zebra 6, has dual layers, right? And in surfaces, when you select the room, the cylinder room, you've got the ceiling, which is the light. Um, oops, there we go. The ceiling, you can control here, you know, the light color, obviously, and intensity. If you really increase that a lot, you will get a lot more lighting from the top, right? And you can obviously change the color as well here, just to anything that you want. That's how easy it is to change, right? And that's on top of the filler or the eye catcher light. That's separate, right? So then you have the wall, all right? And the wall is the outer wall that has no transparency effects. It's the kind of the, the thing behind everything, right? And it has its own color, its, its own pattern, right? Its own color. You can always change the color if you want to, all right? And you can also change the intensity individually of that particular layer. It doesn't affect the other layer, right? And you can also change how the pattern is placed across that wall. If you do two horizontal tiles, you will squeeze the pattern. If you do 0 0.5, you will kind of stretch it outwards and make it a little bit larger. Then you have offset. You can move that left and right and shift, kind of like rotating the room, but here you're only rotating that particular texture, right? You can also tile it up and down. Some textures are tileable in the set. Some are not so much tileable. That doesn't really matter because you can always how things and they will you know look the way they look and you can then shift or move if you need to right you can also do 0 0.5 to stretch it make it larger so you have a lot of control to play with your you know um, each of these setups now those that have dual layers you can always click on the inner wall and it has a similar texture you can of course change to any texture you like if you click here, uh, here, right? If you click here and then click on Browse, you can change to any of the other textures if you want to blend them, or you can use your own textures, right? Now, you can change the color individually of the other one. So the, one, the other one is green as of now, right? And then let's say we won't have that one, well, red, then it is red. And you have, intensity on that as well. You can change that individually of the other one. And same thing, um, as I mentioned, you can change tiling, offset, and all that, in both X and Y, right? Then you have opacity. And opacity is just how hard does it really overlay onto the other layer. If it's 0 0.1, it's going to be very vague, all right? 
If it's one, it's going to be full force, and now uh, there is not going to be any see-through. Okay, at one, it's no see-through at all. It just it's just uh, overlaying on top and letting the other one through. But if you have if you lower this to 0 0.9, you will get a little bit of see-through. You can see that over here, right? So that enables you to have see-through options if you want to. And pretty much, guys, that is it. This is, you know, how uh, simple this product is to use and how cool and quick it is to completely alter your, uh, your portraits, right? And you don't have to have this particular camera view depending... I mean, it depends on what kind of character you're using, which way they are looking at, right? Are they looking left or right? Um, and most often you want to have the eyes kind of visible. You don't want to have them, you know, go too far. Like you want to see the eyes. Something like that, right? The little eye white is, is good to have. You can also have direct eye contact. Just let this through your camera. Now, um, so that was that. And one final thing I want to mention is that, of course, you can, you know, um, rotate the scene around, right? And use from the other side. But then again, if you do that, you want to make sure that you have the filler, the eye catcher light, uh, coming from the other direction, right? As a general rule of thumb, light center, click on that, and then you can rotate it. So it orbits around your character and comes from the other side. A good rule of thumb is to have 90 degrees between your light and camera through your character, 90 degrees, right? Then you have that side lighting of, uh, situation and so forth. And you got to experiment. Sometimes, you know, you need more angle for that light to do, it, do its job. Sometimes it will, it all depends on how your poses are made, right? Sometimes a pose, like in this case, will have a lot of exposure on the arm and upper body. It all depends on how the body is rotated, how the head is rotated. Sometimes it all just clash, clashes and doesn't work as well. In this case, she has her body slightly turned away from the camera. Can you see that? There is one angle on the head and the body is slightly turned away from the camera. This changes how the light affects the model and how it illuminates her. All right. It also, if you have arms and stuff like that, it will also cast shadows, right? This arm will cast, as you can see here, it will cast shadow onto uh, your character. And you wanna have the face facing, uh, sorry, the part of the face facing the camera a little bit darker. It creates tension in your image, makes it more interesting, right? And you wanna have a shadow on the neck. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's all for this video. And so one final thing before leaving you for today is the camera, right? There is a camera preset included and it's meant, like I said, to just capture from kind of like mid abdomen and above the head, right? It's, it's for portraits. You can, of course, zoom out, right click here, zoom out. You can also zoom in. And if you zoom in, you will have you will want to have a blurry backdrop, right? So the way to achieve it is click on the camera, go to parameters and camera here, and you want to make sure the depth of field is on. If you turn it off, it's going to just look like that, right? If you have it on, it will look blurry, which is to be preferred, right? And then in the top view here, in the auxiliary viewport, you can zoom in and see where the kind of line is going by adjusting the focal distance. Uh, it's sometimes a line, sometimes a small sphere, or left, uh, sorry, a red or green line, depending on which angle you're looking from, right? And that kind of line, sometimes you can also use perspective view, and for instance, hidden line. Okay, and then get closer to the character. And here, just look at that, right? See that? You want that line, you want that to target your character's eyes. So adjust the focal distance so that line goes through your character's eyes. And if you have one eye closer to the camera, like in this case her left eye is closer, you want to have that one, the line going through 
that one, right? And then you can adjust here. You can go for a higher number to have less effect or a lower number for more effect. So it's up to you, whatever that suits your scene. All right? Perfect. Again, just a quick uh, repetition here. This item, as of the time of recording of this video, it's not available just yet. It will be soon. And once it's available, I will include a link below this video. So check out more cool free stuff below this video, right? Thanks so much for watching. Follow this channel. Hit like and ring the bell. And I'll see you soon again.